Who's Sam McGee? Sam McGee, huh? All right. Uh, my fellow Americans, there are strange things done neath the midnight sun for the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have seen strange tales that would make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lakely Barge when I cremated her. Sam McGee. Jeez, I almost said Tip O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> Heaven's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> who's that? Oh, let's see. Of somebody who has a friend whose aunt makes makes these for you. <laughs> oh, my darling. Hey, you know, entrepreneurship, you know, seeing something like this is just wonderful. I just hung up down there on the patio shelter out there outside the house, a present we got. You know how no, these old, old trees the will get these big gnarled kind of knot holes in them? Mm -hmm. Just kind of in a ways through the park. Here. In seven minutes There's a married couple. Mark. And for a kind of hobby, they would cut these. They got a lot of oak trees in that place. They'd cut these out. And and then they, well, not square, but for whatever the shape of the knot hole. And then in the knot hole, they get a stone or something and paint it a flat stone like a little owl sitting in the knot hole and then put a black cover on the back of it. And they were doing that for a hobby. It's now a business. <laughs> so we have one down there that they said. But it just never ceases to amaze me the things that suddenly hmm. people turn out doing like that. <laughs> Pretty cute. <laughs> Ten seconds, drop tone, mics on, please. Five. My fellow Americans, I will soon send a message to the Congress asking your senators and representatives to join me in reforming the defense establishment. That includes my office, the Defense Department, the Congress, and industry. The changes our administration will request are based upon the recommendations made in February by the Packard Commission, a bipartisan group that spent months studying ways to give our nation stronger defenses more economically. Earlier this week, I ordered implementation of those recommendations that can be made without congressional action. Now, with congressional support, we'll be able to put into effect perhaps the most thoroughgoing reform of our defense establishment since 1958. This new effort takes place against a background of national defenses that have already grown much stronger. When we first took office, we inherited a Navy that had shrunk from nearly a thousand ships to less than 500, and planes that couldn't fly for want of spare parts. My predecessor had called attention to this and had proposed a five-year expansion of the defense budget. Well, now our rebuilding program has added ships to the fleet, put planes back in the air, and perhaps most important, boosted the morale of our men and women in uniform by giving them the training and pay they deserve. Much still needs to be done, but today the United States has substantially reestablished the strength and self-confidence it needs to perform its role as a leader of the free world. As we've rebuilt our strength, we've made strides in marshalling the defense resources of the nation with increased efficiency. Before we came into office, the costs of major systems had been escalating at an annual rate of 14 percent. With lower inflation, Defense Secretary Weinberger got that crazy spiral under control. Indeed, for the last two years, cost increases have fallen to less than 1 percent. It's lower than the rate of inflation. This one achievement alone has saved billions of dollars. Yet despite these successes, Secretary Weinberger and I knew at the beginning of our second term that still more needed to be done. So last summer, I appointed a bipartisan commission to study the management of our defenses. To chair the commission, I chose Dave Packard, an entrepreneur who started a company that has become one of our country's leaders in high technology, famous the world over for its management techniques and efficiency. He was joined by 16 outstanding Americans, Republicans and Democrats, who represent the best of the business, defense, and academic communities. In February, the Packard Commission submitted its recommendations. 
Now the time has come to put them into effect. Some recommendations can be acted upon without congressional approval, and under Secretary Weinberger's lead leadership, this is taking place. This week, I signed a directive that will enhance coordination between the two sides of the Pentagon budget process, the one that says what we need and the one that says what we can afford. In addition, the Pentagon is streamlining its large procurement structure, and it will begin to give experienced managers more leeway for using their own good judgment in the purchasing process. But certain steps that would make the Department of Defense even more shipshape can take place only with congressional approval. You know, it's as if the Pentagon can swab the decks on its own, but only the Congress can grant permission to polish the brasswork. Well, it's to get this permission that I'm sending my message to Capitol Hill. The Packard Commission report urges the Congress to make a number of improvements in the way it deals with defense. The Commission suggests, for example, that the Congress move from a one-year to a two-year budget cycle. It also urges the Congress to better focus its consideration of defense matters. Today, there are some 40 congressional committees and subcommittees, each of which has some jurisdiction over defense. And the Packard Commission points out that many of these committees duplicate each other's efforts. And friends, we can all agree with the Packard Commission there must be a better, more efficient way. Other recommendations the Congress must approve include moving from year to year to multi-year procurements of weapon systems in order to make the acquisition process more stable. The rewriting of procurement laws to eliminate red tape and the budgeting of major programs according to milestones within the programs themselves, not the dictates of the calendar year. In the coming weeks, the Congress will have before it proposals that would both strengthen our defenses and make the Department of Defense itself more completely the servant of the American people. The Packard Commission has made its recommendations. Now it's time for the administration and the Congress to act upon them. Until next week, thanks for listening, and God bless you. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a great ride up here. Yeah. Do you have any, do you have any systems or any journals that? Are <laughs> well, we can well, we pray a lot. We can make you know? a lot of money on it. Yeah, I've been doing that. You've been doing I, that. I, I always get my busy set. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been foggy the whole time up here, though? No, it? we've had we've had very nice weather. It started off. We thought it was going to be bad. It started off, and we've been able to ride every day, okay. except. I can't say whether it's going to be able to today. Yeah. Mr. President, they're very helpful to us down in Santa Barbara. Yeah. Stay at the hotel. We, we, Thank you for that. We find, we find sure. beds for them. Oh, I make sure the bills go into the treasury. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They're a good group to have. Yo, right? they're great well, down there. Just tremendous. We all enjoy having them. I'm keep pushing to see if you can't have them more often. Oh, I would love it. Sure it. <laughs> <laughs> it was sure nice to meet you. Right. Thank you for taking the time. Okay. Why don't we uh, 